So there are certain statements in A-level physics that are virtually guaranteed to give you marks. No matter what situation we have in electromagnetism, if the question is asking us what has caused the induced EMF, by Faraday's law, the answer can only be a change magnetic flux linkage because the induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. They can also ask us why was it that there was initially a spike of induced EMF that then dropped down to zero. This typically happens when a DC source is actually used. When the DC source is switched on, the voltage temporarily increases, causing a change in magnetic flux linkage. This induces the EMF Afterwards, when the voltage is constant, the induced EMF is just zero. Quite often, we are asked to define the gravitational potential. Remember, it is the work done to move a unit mass from infinity to a point. Similarly for the electric potential, however, it is the work done to move a unit positive charge from infinity to a point. Also remember that the gravitational potential actually increases with distance. It gets closer and closer to zero, reaching a zero value at infinity, becoming less negative. You can think of this physically as extending a spring, and the more you extend it, the more potential energy increases. If you were to release something, it's going to reach the planet with a greater kinetic energy because more potential energy was converted to kinetic energy. No matter how complicated a question looks, if we are asked, why does an object perform circular motion? The answer is that there's always a net resultant force at 90 degrees to the displacement pointing towards the center of rotation. Similarly, if we're asked why does the speed not change during circular motion? Well, the answer is that the force, the resultant force, is perpendicular to the displacement, meaning that there is no work done. If we have an electron that passes through a potential difference, very often we're not given enough information to use the Suvat equations, and if that's the case, just simply using the equation that EV is equal to a half mv squared will allow us to work out the speed of that electron or any charged particle as it passes through through the plates. In moments questions, very often we are asked to explain what happens to the force of anything that's turning if the distance has changed somehow. Very often in those types of questions, the actual moment required remains the same because the sum of the clockwise moments has to equal the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. And let's say that we were to decrease the perpendicular distance, this would mean that the required force will have to increase. Extremely often in A-level physics, we're asked how a stationary wave is formed. Remember, this occurs when a progressive wave is incident at a fixed point, it is reflected and then it interferes or superposes back with the incident wave, creating nodes and antinodes. Talking about stationary waves, a difference between a stationary and a progressive wave is that all points on a progressive wave will have the same amplitude, whereas in a stationary wave the amplitude varies with position. If we have a ring of conducting current, and let's say that we move a magnet in its vicinity by Faraday's law, if there's a change of magnetic flux linkage, there will be some induced current and some induced EMF in this conducting loop. This conducting loop will then turn into a magnet and the induced EMF will be in such direction such as to oppose the change that actually caused it. This is known as Lenz's law. In practice, this means that this right here will be a North Pole. If this was not a North Pole, let's say if it was a South Pole, then we would gain energy out of nothing and the magnet would just accelerate straight through it. If you're finding electromagnetism tricky, I've just just finished a booklet with nearly 70 questions on electromagnetism. I guarantee you that if you do all those questions, you'll have an excellent grasp on the fundamentals of electromagnetism. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, at this time of year, there is one thing that I think every single A-level student should be doing, and I've made a separate video for this, and you must watch that right over here.